And so that hopefully is a good segue to drug development. So if you pursue a career in drug development, you would see many, 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 many versions of this um, timeline, this kind of image. Um, so this kind of highlights um, the, the timeline um, of drug development from the discovery, the preclinical, so before it enters human studies. So this is you know, where the research, intense research um, is involved, like where I've been involved in as well. Uh, and then it enters clinical trials. So there are three phases of a clinical trials, um, phase one, phase two, phase three, um, usually phase one, um, they test a drug in a very, very small number of patients, like 20 patients, um, not, not even patients, uh, yeah, 20 patients. And then when they move to phase two, maybe like 100 patients. And then in phase three, they really want to test, you know, if the drug is efficacious in a larger population so you can test the drug in thousands of patients. And then eventually they will file um, for an approval with um, the regulatory um, company in the US as the FDA, in, in Europe it's the EMA. Um, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, they're happy with your study, um, they'll approve the drug. But again, this is a lengthy process and this costs money. So um, it, yeah, from bringing a single drug from the bench, so from the lab to the bedside, so into humans and into patients is very expensive. And it's approximately, I think, for one drug alone, this was a, this was to 2020, I think, the stats is two to three billion dollars. So from one drug, from like your 10,000 candidates, um, it takes billions of dollars to get that into the clinic. Um, so, and, and this is an interesting fact as well. So only one in 5,000, uh, one, yeah, only one in five to 10,000 um, prospective can anti-cancer agents receives the FDA approval and only one in 10 um, drugs that enter the phase one actually get approved um, in, 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 yeah, in the regulatory process. And so why is that? Bakit, bakit ang, ang, uh, why is it that um, the, the failure rate is very high? Um, and so there are nuances in, in cancer drug discovery. And hopefully I'll be able to kind of show you some of them. And so one of them is the limitations of, of 2D culture. So earlier I was talking to you about, you know, cancer cell lines and how we grow them in these little flasks and things like that. Um, but if, if you can imagine a tumor in your body um, is actually not cells on a dish in a flat. They're actually in 3D, um, more like a ball of cells attached to your kind of bloodstream. And so they're very different architectures. So in 2D, as I said, they, 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 they're monolayer, um, they grow flat, um, so, and they attach the bottom in a plastic. So it's not really like kind of the normal environment of a tumor cell. Um, also, um, if you grow them on a dish, they have unlimited access to the nutrients. Um, so, you know, they, they, grow, they grow in a dish with the soup that I was talking about, that kind of full of um, proteins and glucose and things like that. Um, but that's not how re it really is in, in, a, in, a, in the body. So if you can imagine here, this is a 3D um, tumor. So if in a 3D tumor, your mga cells sa loob, sa, sa, git, sa gitna, um, will, you know, won't be able to access the nutrients, but the cells on the outside do. And why is that important? Because that actually affects how drugs, uh, how cells respond to, to drugs. And so that's the limitation of, of, of 2D uh, culture is that, you know, we, historically that's how we, we, we discover drugs. We, we test them on this monolayer of cells on a Petri dish, but actually, you know, we, we now with more research, um, I think, uh, you know, we're seeing that maybe a 3D culture is definitely a more, more representative of the tumor architecture um, in the body. And so, these are, you know, this is kind of the work I've done as well, is culturing cells um, in 3D. Um, so here, I'll show you an example of what I was talking about, how they respond to drugs differently. Um, so these are breast cancer cells. They're called BT474. Um, so I called for them 2D and then in 3D. So you see here, well, spheres. And then when you and I treated the cells, 
um, with, with drugs. Um, so this C is control. Uh, and then in dark, uh, in black is 3D. Uh, and then in light gray is 2D. So if you focus perhaps on like the first here, if you, if you grow cells in 2D, the control cells, and you treat them with a drug T, stress to tamoxifen, um, you can see, let's say from 100%, the tamoxifen kills them by 50% when you grow them in 2D. But then when you grow them in 3D, so in dark, so from 100% to here, they actually only kill them by, let's say, uh, 30%. So you can see the differential um, sensitivity of these cells when they grow, they're grown in 2D versus 3D culture. So that's how it is back then. They were treating these cells on 2D, thinking, oh my God, like effective non drug go. I seen hack up, it kills the drugs. But actually, in reality, when you take these, these molecules, these, these drugs into a human, um, it's not as effective. And so this is why the drug failure rate um, um, in clinical trials is quite high because and that, there's so many candidates that, that go in to, pre, to clinical trials, but actually they're not effective. They think it's really good, but yeah, they fail to, to show efficacy in, in patients. Um, and one of them is the fact that we, we don't have, we didn't have the right um, model system to, to, to culture these, these cancer cells. And so that's one of the drawbacks or the nuances in, in drug development. But, you know, there's progress and we are working um, towards bettering these, these models. Um, so this is basic 3D culture. And now we also have co-cultures. So as you can imagine, I showed you a very reductionist view of the tumor. Tumor cells, healthy cells. But again, in reality, when in, in the body, it's not just tumor cells. Um, they are surrounded by other cells. So fibroblasts, immune cells, endothelial cells, T cells. So there's lots of things to this. Um, so these also influence the, um, the, the sensitivity of these drugs, the sensitivity of these cells to, to drugs. And it's very difficult to kind of grow all these cells in, in, in a small dish. Um, but we are a step forward. Um, so these are cultured co-culture cells. Um, so in red, yung mga cancer cells, and then in green are fibroblasts. So I think, you know, cult culturing cells, very early stages um, of, of, of development, but I think, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're able to, to co-culture at least two different types of cells in the dish, but ideally you want like everything in a dish, which, you know, is, we still need to uh, no, optimize. Uh, but there is progress. Uh, and then another kind of model that we're using is what we call PDX. So these are patient-derived xenografts. So these are where tissue or cells from a patient's tumor are implanted into immunodeficient mice. So wala silang immune system. So they can take in any foreign um, cells um, and they will just happily grow the cells because they don't have an immune system. Um, uh, and allowing for the, the a natural cancer progression. So you can actually see in a whole organ, in a whole um, animal, um, how cancer progresses. So this is a better model, but as I said earlier, um, in vivo mice work is very expensive. It's like, yeah, thousands per mice. Um, but again, it's a different kind of answer to your question as well, a bit more representative. Um, so this is kind of, um, a work I've done as well. Um, so taking cells from directly from a patient tumor, um, and then you grow them in these 3D, what we call spheroids. So these are the spheroids we grow. And then you can treat them with different drugs, test them, how they grow these little 3D cultures. And then after that, you, you inject it back to a, a mice, and, and then you let the tumors grow. And then you can kind of, you, you, you treat the mice with a drug and you see how it affects um, um, the tumor growth. And so this is, as I said, expensive. It takes a long time for a mice to kind of grow the tumor. It takes about six months. For the cells, I mean, these can take two weeks. Uh, uh, the 3D takes two weeks. These can just take a week or so. But if you 
talk about doing experiments in mice, they can take six months. So I was doing a postdoc, one year postdoc after my PhD, and I was working with mice. And after six months, I, like, I had nothing to do the first three, four months. I was just waiting for tumors to grow in a mice. Like I was just reading and reading and reading. But yeah, so this one takes time. But again, um, answers different questions and it's more representative of, of, of the tumor um, in, in the human body. 